Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part one on the 1970 Corvette Stingray. We'll be including prep and masking. If you hang around to the very end, we'll also include a little bit of the body repairs I did. That's just through some photos because unfortunately I left my camera at home the day that we did the body repairs. So you can see here we've given it a good four coats of two-pack high build primer. The brand I used was Concept Paints HS Primer. And we ended up leaving that for two days prior to sanding. So we came in on the Monday, did the body repairs, primed it up. We went away on the Tuesday to the airport actually and painted an aeroplane tail. Then come in on the Wednesday, sanded it all down and got it painted. So before I even started doing any block work, I've gone around and picked up any of those pinholes that may uh, not have been filled up by the two-pack primer. I've found you are better off doing it before you start blocking rather than after blocking. Um, when I was an apprentice, I was always taught to just sand it down and, and then pick them up last, but I've found this is definitely the best way of doing it. That way it gets blocked down with the uh, Corsa 180 grit um, and it will actually end up being a lot flatter at the end rather than sometimes if you've gone right through the stages, gone say uh, 180, 320, 500, then tried to fill them up, um, you'll end up trying to sand it out with a smoother sandpaper and then be left with a little bit of a high spot where you put that filler. So I always like to put that in first then give it a good block down with the 180 grit just on that flat block you see me using there. Um, that's quite a good handy little block. It can get into most of the um, flat surfaces but for some of these curves and shapes that this car has I found you're better off using a soft block and I'll give you guys a quick look at the one that I use. Um, it's a great little block. I like them. They're inexpensive. I think they're, um, you get three of them for about $16 from memory. Um, so it's called 3M Stick It Block and it's this one here. Um, they're actually designed for use with a sanding disc. So you can see they're actually in the correct shape for the sanding disc and they'll allow you to get in most uh, of those kind of curves and stuff like that. And again, I just used 180 grit. There was a couple of bits that weren't quite right um, prior to blocking it down, but um, when it's finished, it ended up turning out quite nice. As you can see here, I just um, put a bit of knifing putty, just uh, the worth extra fine polyester filler in there. Blocked that out with some 180 grit, went over the top of that with some 320 grit prior to putting just a little bit of 1K primer over it. Now, yes, in a perfect world, I'd be using 2K primer, but the way I look at it, there's loads and loads of layers of paint underneath my two-pack primer, which it has definitely sealed down. One extra coat of uh, acrylic primer on the top isn't really going to cause much uh, problems for us, and it turns out the job came up quite nice. I'm going to do a full set on this uh, car here because it's a pretty cool old car. When I was a kid, I was always uh, a big fan of these cars. I had models and toys. They were sort of my number one car when I was a kid. But anyway, going on with the job, I've just got 320 on the uh, orbital sander with the interface pad on it. The brand is a Dynabraid sander. Look, I don't know the size of the orbit and stuff like that. To be honest, I never even really look at it. It doesn't really make much of a difference to me. All I know is that it works and it does a good job for me. I bought this sander well probably 13 or 14 years ago when i was a second year apprentice and it's been going strong ever since i left the audio in just for this touch here so you can actually see exactly why i'm wearing earmuffs because i've had to pull the exhaust out of this sander because it ended up getting clogged up and slowing right down um I couldn't figure out exactly why it was going slow for a, a, quite a while, so I ended up pulling the exhaust section off, and it turned out that it must have been clogged up. I tried uh, soaking it in thinners overnight and then blowing it out with the airline, and it still didn't. It improved it, but it still made it quite slow. So I've just ended up pulling it right out, and I've got myself a, a really nice, fast whizzy again. You may have also noticed I'm not even using any guide coat. Look, if I was made of money, and it was free, I'd probably use it, but it's not free, and I'm not made of money, and I'm trying to save a couple of bucks. That's pretty much all there is to it, um, and I also know that I can get exactly the same finished product without it. 
Um, that 3M dry guide coat that you guys probably seen me use um, in a few of my videos, it's great stuff. It's, it's handy, it does help, but it's not the be all and end all. Um, you can miss sanding scratches while using guide coats, and you can also not use guide coats and not miss scratches if you know what you're doing. So I always keep my jobs clean when dry sanding, blow it off in between each scrap, uh, each step. As you can see me here, I'm inspecting it, going back over spots here and there. Um, I can differentiate a 180 scratch from a 320 scratch. And I can also do the same with a 320 to a 500 scratch. You just get your, get your make sure you've got your lights on. You need good lighting in the area that you're working in and um, constantly inspecting over your own work to make sure you haven't missed anything. And that goes right through the job, right from prep work to masking uh, to application of your paint. You've always got to be looking for things that you may have missed. Um, I take every single step with pride. It's not just putting that coat of paint on that I really take pride in. I take pride in my prep work. I take pride in my masking. I take pride in my polishing and every single stage. So I am kind of jumping around a bit with the footage um, from the hood to the fenders. Um, that's just because that's the order that I did it in. Basically, while waiting for a bit of fine filler to dry on one, I'll jump to the other panel and then when I've got a bit of 1K uh, primer drying on one, I'll jump back over to the other panel just to optimize my work time and get the job done as quick as I can without wasting time and having to wait for uh, products to dry. I was just being pretty careful with the orbital sander on a panel like this as well. You can really dig that pad into all of those curves. So a lot of it, I just give it a very quick sand over and then I finish it all off by hand. Um, as you can see there, there's one or two little spots where I cut through just a bit of filler there So I just spotted a bit of 1k primer over and then I'm just going over all the edges just on the hood here with uh, 400 grit whereas on the fenders it was um, The edges were a lot rougher So I decided to use some 320 grit and then go over the final stage uh, is 500 grit soft pad like you see me using here. There's great little sanding pads here. Um, the Norton is the brand of the ones that I'm using. I'll be doing a bit of a um, workshop product review. So just um, miscellaneous products, say sandpapers, uh, polishes, and all of that kind of stuff, uh, paints and stuff like that. So stay tuned and I'll just take you guys through the stuff that I use. So just continuing on going around with the 320 grit, making sure all those curves are nice, nice and smooth. Um, just you'll get the feel of it by your hand if you feel any highs and lows put a bit of filler in there if there's any sort of rough edges just keep sanding them and that's the main purpose of what I'm doing here it's the little bits of attention to detail like this that make the difference in between a professional job and an amateur job one thing I've found about prep work is that you've got to be a little bit versatile and it does take quite a long time to get a system uh, down pat and something that you are happy with, but I've put hours and hours, literally hours and hours in and thought into the prep work that I do, and I don't prep two jobs up exactly the same. However, I do have a final grade that I like to go over it with, um, but the ones getting me up to there may vary from job to job. Um, but a rule of thumb I like to do with a restoration style or something that I'm trying to get nice and flat, I'll go 180, 320, then do my edges with say 320 or 400, that just depends on how rough they are. Um, I'll then go over it with 500 like you see me doing here, and then finish it off with 500 grit if I'm putting base coat over it, and 800 grit if it's going to be a blend panel. So going back over that hood now, I'll be careful not to call it a bonnet through this series because it's an American car and Americans never put bonnets on their cars. They put hoods, obviously, and they never put guards either. I'm sure they're fenders. So as I said before, just finishing off all those curves with the 500 grit just by hand. Um, again, just always checking what you're doing. Make sure you haven't missed anything. Um, if you uh, wanted to go for a final check over your panel, 
um, just to see what it's going to look like when it's wet. You can get the uh, wax and grease remover bottle. Um, we've got a atomizer bottle. It's a brake cleaner bottle, a worth brake cleaner bottle. You can spray that over the entire panel. You can then get it in the light and you'll be able to see any highs and lows. But as it turned out, I sort of already knew what I was in for because I had a look at it wet with a bit of primer on it. I knew there was one or two tiny little spots. I focused on giving them a good block and decided um, good enough is good enough for this one. Um, so there you go, just driving into the booth. I'm pretty sure this is a 350 Chev in this car. Um, that's what I was told, but don't quote me on it. I have been wrong on car engines before in my videos. It's not my area of expertise. Let's just stick to the paintwork. So I ended up skipping out most of the edge masking in this, but as you can see, I've just gone around that hood there, backmasked it, and put some paper around the edge. I've also jacked the car up while it's in the booth because it's got a big front apron that comes around, and I wanted to get all up underneath that. I would definitely struggle if it was down on the ground. It was hard enough to get as is. So next up, I'll just be getting a piece of my masking plastic, throwing it over the car, opening it up, and razor blading it out and taping it back down. I've had a few questions about this masking plastic and where I get it from and what it's called. Look, in Australia anyway, this is all I can talk for. Um, this stuff is dirt cheap. It's $20 a roll if you buy them in five. So yeah, for $100, we get five boxes of this um, plastic. It's 4.2 meters wide and 60 meters long or something like that from memory. Um, yeah, just about every auto body shop in Australia sells it. I'm not sure about worldwide, however, I would be pretty surprised if it's not available in the major countries like USA, UK, and Europe. If anyone would like to learn a little bit more about the 1970 Corvette Stingray and the Stingray models in general, I've decided to put a Wikipedia link to the Stingrays in the description of this video, so be sure to check that out. Um, there's also links to my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Vine, Tumblr, and all that in my description. I also do a little bit of a write-up on each video too, so be sure to check that out. Definitely a very iconic vehicle of the era. The Stingrays, a beautiful car. It's a pleasure to have been able to work on a car like this. I would just about have done this job for him for free just to have had the opportunity to work on one. That's how much I love these cars. So for the paint on this, I ended up going concept the whole way from start to finish. So concept primer, concept base coat, concept clear coat and everything. So a unbastardized system, which is pretty cool. Like most panel shots, to be honest, that I work in, they chop and change, they use a whatever primer and they uh, they don't use systems uh, the way they're meant to be used. But now I've got my own shop, I'm onto this Concept Nomix and it's great paint and I'm using it, uh, the full system, so it's, it's cool to do. Um, anyway, that's just about going to finish this off. I'm going to finish with a few pics of the previous day's work, which is when we repaired and primed it and then do it at the very end i'm going to do a before and after well where it's up to now um i'm yet to polish it tomorrow i'm going to go in and do the polishing and the final detail and the job will be done but stay tuned because in the next few videos i'll be working on is the paintwork for this one so there you go that's the uh hood being skim filled um i just had to reapply a couple of spots here and there that was still low but um, all in all, it came out real nice. There's the fenders. Um, I tackled the hood and my partner tackled the fenders. So I'm quite happy with how they both came up. There it is in the spray booth, getting a mask up. Always making sure we don't put that first coat of primer on too heavy, especially when you're going over the top of acrylic uh, paints like I did in this one. Got a couple of those little vents as well that we did. And here it is as it came in, as the customer gave it to us. He gave it a shot himself actually on this one. Um, how we just decided he wanted to get it professionally finished off. Um, he actually didn't do too bad of a job. I've seen worse, um, worse DIY attempts. But um, yeah, he just wanted it finished off a bit better. I've got a feeling that by the time he gets this car back, he'll 
um, be so impressed with the paintwork on the front of it that he'll want the rest of it painted. Wouldn't be surprised. So there it is, um, where it's up to at the moment. Still need a little bit of a denib here and there, but there's not very many ripples in it at all. Nice and straight. Probably better than uh, what they were like from factory, knowing what fiberglass parts are like. So if you want to hang around here, just check out the um, videos that I've got here. I've got a restoration job that I did and a should I buy a cheap spray gun. Click on them, otherwise view my channel. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.